said that the long-term abortionists in America are the bottom of the barrel as far as medical professionals go, that they weren't good enough to get like a real doctor job. So they decided to kill babies instead. I think others realized it was lucrative and decided that they wanted to do that because they didn't have to be on call to save lives because they just had a pre-scheduled appointment to end them. The, with this in mind, today on the How to Win Debates episode of this Explicitly Pro Life podcast, I want to go over some of the ick factors surrounding some of the abortionists, uh, infamous abortions uh, that we have heard and learned about. These are just the ones we've learned about who've been exposed in recent years, which sadly is not all that surprising to me. Um, so let's go through some of America's dirtiest doctors. First and foremost... Leroy Carhart. Leroy Carhart was investigated in the death of General Morbelli, uh, who died from massive internal bleeding after he committed a third trimester abortion uh, outside of Washington, D.C. on her and her child in February 2013. 2004, Carhart killed Kristen Gilbert, a Special Olympian who became pregnant after being sexually assaulted while also committing a third trimester abortion on her and her child. Carhart boasts to this day that he's carried out nearly 20 some thousand abortions over 24 weeks when babies have been proven to feel pain and when we know because of our science and medical technology are viable outside the womb, meaning they can be born premature, given medical attention and survive. Many of us have know someone who was born premature at 24, 25, 26 weeks. Yeah, he's killed 20,000 of them and brags about them. Lectures at medical schools. Carhartt today has a practice outside of Omaha, Nebraska, between Omaha, Lincoln, Nebraska, and Bellevue. He also has a practice in, uh, I believe, Prince George's County uh, in Maryland, uh, bordering Washington, D.C. It's absolutely despicable. Thankfully, because of our work uh, at Students for Life Action, Students for Life, coupled with the, the nonstop work of grassroots activists in Nebraska, we are close to making Bellevue a sanctuary city for the pre-born. Uh, that means he should basically need to put his abortion facility up for sale, uh, but he's not going to stop. This man is an ideologue. He wants to kill as many babies as he can before he dies. So Leroy Carhartt has already begun looking for uh, new uh, states to set up shop in so he can travel uh, back and forth. Right now he spends half his week in Nebraska and then comes, kills babies and goes back to, uh, comes to Maryland and back and forth, back and forth every single week. Uh, now he's looking to set up shop in Pueblo, Colorado. We're working to stop him uh, from moving there. But Leroy Carhart still practices abortions today and commits, committed over 20,000 abortions of children who could survive and could be living on this earth. Uh, and he's still proudly practicing and being asked to speak at medical schools. All right, another one of those dirty doctors. Douglas Carpin, 2013, three former Carpin employees went public in Texas telling their horror stories of how the abortionists killed babies after birthing them by forcing instruments into the soft spot of their heads or twisting their heads off their necks. Carpin's history of botched abortion goes back to 1988 when 15-year-old uh, Denise Montoya died after he committed a 26-week abortion on her. Ulrich Kulpfler. Uh, Dr. Ulrich Kulpfler committed over 50,000 abortions since the 1970s near Fort Wayne, Indiana. In the early 2000s, he was accused of committing abortion on a 10-year-old victim of rape and was notorious for incomplete abortions, putting women's lives at risk. His Fort Wayne facility closed in 2013, and three weeks after his death on September 3, 2019, police discovered fetal remains that Clothler had hoarded in his basement and in his car. They found over 2,200 remains of aborted victims discovered right in his home and in his car. Kermit Gauss now. May of 2013, Kermit Gosnell was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter for killing a mother, Kadamayer Manger, during an abortion. He was found guilty of first-degree murder for three babies that, that his own staff testified had been born alive 
after birth in his abortion facility and still killed. And he was also found guilty of 200 other crimes. Yeah, you remember that whole debate? There was a, a vote taken on Capitol Hill recently where we were voting for the, um, the Infant Survivors Act, meaning that if children were born accidentally during an abortion procedure, that the medical staff would legally be required to provide that child with oxygen and care, call the EMT, get the child to the ER. Nearly every single Democrat, all 200 and what, like 11 of them, voted against that act and for infanticide. And their argument for doing that from Nancy Pelosi and the rest of the leftists was that infanticide doesn't happen. This is just a myth. This is just a scare tactic from the pro-life lobby. Even though we don't have a national abortion reporting law, the CDC admits this happens. I personally know several people, Melissa Odin, for example, who actually survived an abortion as an infant and whose life was spared. But by the way, that doesn't happen in Nancy Pelosi's world. When the police raided Kermit Gosnell's facility, not because he was committing illegal late-term abortions, not because for years uh, the pediatricians had stopped referring young girls to his abortion facility because they were coming back to their doctors with vaginal diseases because he was using dirty instruments, not because he had different waiting rooms, one for white women, one for black women, not because there was cat urine and feces spread throughout his whole office, even in the operating rooms, not because he didn't have any way for EMT gurneys to get through to save women if, they, if there was a medical emergency. No, when police raided his facility for narcotics, for illegally distributing narcotics as House of Horrors, they found dozens of baby's feet, severed feet kept in jars, which he later testified the reason he did so was in case someone won a maternity test. They found dozens of children, children stuffed in cardboard boxes in the basement. At the time of his arrest, Gosnell was making $1.8 million a year from committing these crimes. And by the way, as, as uh, Frank Pavone says, you can't really practice vice virtuously uh, because of tax abortion laws. Uh, he was uh, g getting around a lot of taxes in the state as well. Another dirty doctor, Brian Finkel. Brian Finkel was an Arizona abortionist who was sentenced to 35 years in prison for sexually abusing more than a dozen patients during examinations. More than 30 women came forward to testify at his trial that he had groped them and inappropriately touched them. And those are just the ones we know. The last uh, dirty doctor we'll talk about today is Michael Roth, a Michigan abortionist, uh, after hitting a disabled pedestrian with his car, was caught with 14 jars of fetal parts in his car trunk, in addition to the very powerful uh, anesthetic fentanyl. Prior, he had at least six malpractice complaints and judgments lodged against him from 1988 to 2015, some involving home abortions that led, led to alleged complications and allegedly botched procedures that later necessitated hysterectomies, so making a woman unable to ever carry another child ever again. A state health inspector found that during a January 20, 2002 check that his drug control license had been expired for more than 20 years. He'd also been sanctioned for shoddy record keeping and improprieties for prescribing medication. In 2012, was fined and sanctioned by a state disciplinary committee for a range of violations. 2005, his wife claimed an application for a restraining order that she, quote, lives locked in the basement, end quote, out of fear that Roth would continue to, quote, assault, attack, molest, wound, follow, confront, otherwise injure her as continue to prescribe and administer medication to her, end quote. When the pro-life movement implores mothers that there are better options for her and the crisis she may find herself in, we mean it.